We need new laws to regulate human behavior in order to protect the integrity of the Earth and all species on it from our wanton exploitation. This is my life's mission in the years I have left. As Martin Luther King said, the law may not change the heart, but it will restrain the heartless. The new face of colonialism comes in the form of Coca-Cola. You walk anywhere in Africa and it's Coca-Cola water. You cannot get anything but, you cannot drink the water out of the tap, you can't even find purifiers. You are an absolute slave to this company. In this country, you have to pay more for this water than you pay for the same amount of Coca-Cola. So that, that's something. There are at least a dozen publicly traded water indexes that deal only with water, trading it on the open stock market. Five years ago, this didn't exist. Now it's just simply exploding. There's a pipe coming up, and between the pipe and the tap, there's a water meter, and you have to pay for an electronic key to get charged up. And you can look at it and you can see the water meter counting every single drop. And as one friend of mine said, I can afford about two flushes a month from this thing. That's how expensive it is. You know, they just throw their hands up in despair and they go back to that river that has cholera warning signs on it. I just, I've never seen blood like this. They're just pouring this stuff right in. This is going into Lake Titicaca, which is the sacred lake to the, the indigenous peoples here. We can see that because that's the part that it's open. Of course. But you don't see the whole thing that of they course. are doing to the river here. What they're going to do here is they're going to divert it. Yeah, and they're Under just going to cover. They're yeah. not going to clean it up. They no, just no, it won't no. be so ugly and open. Yeah. It'll still smell the way it's Yeah. Y precisamente se tiene que involucrar a la fuerza este río porque hay mal olor porque sale de del matadero, la sangre, todo lo que carnean este, el ganado, esa agua sucia echan los vecinos, no tenemos encantarillado en algunas zonas, entonces eso, esos vecinos a la fuerza tienen que salir a los riachuelos para hacer su necesidad. So let me understand, Suez said they put an 80 million dollar treatment facility here, not only did they not do that, but they've diverted the raw sewage into yeah. this river that goes into Lake Titicaca. Yeah, this is a river that crosses all the city. So it's, it's around the city that they are doing the same thing. Traditionally, water has been delivered as a public service by governments. But in the last 10 years, three major water companies from Europe have started delivering water on a for-profit basis in many parts of the world. They are very powerful. They're all among the top 100 corporations, Fortune 500 companies. They're very wealthy. They're growing very fast. And basically, developing countries, poor countries, are being forced all over the world to hand over basic control of their water systems to a for-profit multinational from Europe or far away. We are from Suez. Oh, this is the Suez. That's interesting. At first, when these private companies went into developing countries, they were welcomed by the people because they were going to bring water and they were going to bring investments. Of course, what people didn't understand was that they're not bringing new investments. It's paid for by the public purse and by the World Bank. Um, then they came in and they raised prices and they didn't deliver good quality water and they cut poor people off and they fired public servants and they, their record was a disaster. The people here don't know. We just asked them. They don't know that they're getting prepaid water meters. With what with they're not happy with what have done with They don't have a choice. These people are poor. They don't have a choice. They're not being educated about the implications of the whole process. They don't even know they're having Because you don't give them a choice. It's impossible to discuss this. It's impossible. You're uncertain. It's because you're always worried. So we are going. People, people are to, to pay regarding what they consume. Oh, oh, and you know that. How can you tell? You cannot deliver the same amount of good quality water or health care or education or anything else to a population that needs it if you're also providing profit for your investors. It's just basic common sense.
This notion that we'll have water forever is wrong. California is running out. It's got 20 some years of water. New Mexico's got 10, although they're building golf courses as fast as they can. So maybe they can whittle that down to five. Arizona, Florida, even the Great Lakes now, there's huge new demand. So this notion that somehow these problems are far away, get rid of that, you know, take it out of your head, uh, you know, delete that. You know those movies where there's the comet coming at the earth and all of a sudden the governments of the world say, gee, we don't, our differences aren't so big anymore because we're about to mm -hmm. all die. That's really where we are. There is a comet coming at us. It's mm -hmm. called water shortage. As a Canadian, quite frankly, I'm embarrassed by the way our governments collectively have mishandled water, taken it for granted. I call it the myth of abundance. political leadership, political courage, and political leaders who won't even stop lying to us. And let me tell you, they are lying when they tell you that the tar sands are safe. They are not safe for the people there. So this is a revolution in this province, in this country, and I am telling you, we will not give up. Nellie McClung said, no one likes an alarm clock in action. And I think she, she knew I was going to be in the world one day when she said that. I am told that at the United Nations, we're in the midst of the third uh, water decade. So I never dreamt that Maud would be now with us in this task that all of a sudden fell upon me hoping and praying that she would become my chief advisor, senior advisor on the issue of water. We're extremely happy to have you with us. I'm extremely happy to be here. The honor is mine. No. The honor is mine. Thank you. You mentioned this um, development program that, are they tar pits, pit okay. mines? In northern Alberta, which isn't all that far from Alaska, is the world's biggest oil find. The tar sands, they call them the tar sands. For every barrel of oil they're able to extract from the tar sands, they destroy uh, three to five barrels of water. And they're destroying three million barrels of water a day now, but they plan to expand it four to five times. They've killed a boreal forest the size of Greece. It's going to become the biggest site of greenhouse gas emissions in the world within 10 years. It is an appalling thing. I flew over it several weeks ago. I called it Canada's Mordor from Tolkien, and the press all picked it up, and now everybody's referring to it as Mordor. I'm working with thousands of people around the world to save the world's water for the Earth, for other species for ourselves and for future generations as a public trust and a human right. I believe that water could become nature's gift to us to teach us how to live in peace with one another and in harmony with the earth.
if we had the wisdom to listen. <laughs>